All right, so there are lots of reasons you could get this wrong. This is definitely a hard question, but one reason you cannot get this wrong is that you somehow forget the formula of a cylinder. So they give it to you. It's in the reference chart. It's at the top of the blue book app. Just click the little X squared button and this will pop up. And this is all you need, right? They give us the volume of a cylinder. It's literally the same picture. Volume is equal to pi r squared h. r is the radius, h is the height. So let's just transfer that right over. Let's just get that there to start things off. So v equals pi r squared h. Now let's look at the question because there's a lot of instructions here. The figure shown is a right circular cylinder with a radius of r and a height of h. Uh, first of all, right circular cylinder is just what you think of as a cylinder. It just means that the height and the radius form a right angle with each other, but that's how you'd always think of it. It's not like crooked. That's that. It just it, don't let that bother you. It's a cylinder. A second right circular cylinder, not shown, has a volume that is 392 times as large as the volume of the circular uh, of the cylinder shown. Which of the following could represent the radius r in terms of r and the height h in terms of h of the second cylinder? So that, that sounds confusing. It's basically like you've got a big cylinder and a small cylinder. The big r and the big h represent the dimensions of the big cylinder, and the small r and the small h represent the dimensions of the small cylinder. Now, the weirdest thing about this is we are being asked to measure and change the volume of a shape, but we don't have any of the actual dimensions of that shape. But guess what we can do? We can plug points into equations to get some values. Specifically, we're going to use that arithmetize strategy. Because they tell us that the second cylinder is 392 times larger. I don't know how big the original one is, but I can make it however big I want and then just know that the bigger the next one is going to be 392 times bigger. So it, it'll all work itself out. So I'm going to make my life as easy as possible. Let's make this radius one and this height one. Let's make it a really nice small cylinder so that I can understand its volume very easily because then the volume of this cylinder is one squared times one times pi. So the volume of this thing is just pi. Okay, now we need the new volume to be 392 times bigger. And now instead of thinking about these weird dimensions, we can just use the dimensions that we made up when we arithmetized, right? So look at choice A, for example. Instead of the big radius of the big cylinder being this big R, now it's just eight. Because what did we make the little r? We made the little r one. So eight times one is eight. And the big H is seven, because seven times the little h, which was one, is still seven. So now we can just calculate the volume when we have a radius of eight and a height of seven. Now instead of dealing with all these variables, we just have numbers. We have actual dimensions that like if we thought about it, we can just like in our mind, take out a ruler and measure the height in inches or whatever of a cylinder. So let's just do the math. So eight squared is 64. So 64 times seven is 448 times pi. And I'm not gonna multiply the pi out because I don't wanna deal with the decimal. I wanna see right now what that relationship is between the two volumes. And now it's very clear why picking one as both the radius and the height of the small cylinder was a smart move. Because I can now compare really easily that this is 448 times bigger than the small cylinder, right? The big cylinder in choice A is 448 times bigger, but we need it to be 392. So all we gotta do is keep trying until we get some numbers that work. So let's do, uh, I mean, I don't think it's gonna be B, because if, if A is already too big and we make the height even bigger, that's not gonna work. So let's skip right to C. So again, this is seven times one and eight times one, right? Because the R and the H were both one. So the volume is pi seven squared times eight. So 49 times eight is, what do you know, 392. Now we could, we should try the other answer choices, right? It's possible that we just happen to pick numbers that work for R and H in the beginning that produce multiple answers that are correct. Uh, that's rare, and I don't think it's even possible on a question quite like this, but just in terms of getting new habits, uh, getting good habits, we should probably do it. But look at choice D, it's the same problem that B had, right? It's taking something we already know that works and then making it bigger. So it's it, we know, it, I don't know what the exact value is gonna be, but it's gonna be bigger. So here we got exactly what we needed, no reason to mess with it. So we don't need to make a bigger radius. So to me, that question is actually not so bad. 
The, the problem most people have with this question or really any advanced geometry question on the test is they make us think about geometry without giving us dimensions. And so if we can arithmetize and just make them up, great. But just be careful. Sometimes they, they will make us solve for dimensions. That's different. This is not that. They were not asking us to find the radius or find the height. Notice that the variables that we had to start carried through the whole question. They wanted us to think in terms of algebra for this entire question. But we use strategies to not think that way. And I think that makes it much easier to think about because I don't picture uh, a, a, a cylinder with a radius of R. I can picture it with a radius of one. I can think of that. I can know how big an inch is. I can, I can manipulate a number. It's much easier than manipulating a letter. So whenever possible, try to move away from algebra and plug points into equations is a reminder to do that. And specifically arithmetizing is when we just make up those points that we're gonna plug into the equations. Uh, so that way we can have something to work with instead of the variables.